Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. We're continuing our Lang's Method Valuation Series, talking about pairwise valuations. So Chatbot Arena is one of the most popular pairwise valuation benchmarks that's out there. And we can kind of use our framework here to, to kind of think through what it actually is doing. So in that particular case, uh, a user prompts two different anonymous LLMs uh, with the same prompt, and the two LLMs produce a generation. And in terms of evaluator, the user itself is the evaluator. So the user decides which generation he or she prefers and picks that one. And so it's very simply pairwise valuation with human as judge, right? You basically on, you know, law of generations from two different LLMs, which are anonymous. Now, the LLM system also showed that you can use LLM as judge for pairwise valuations as well. And they have actually a pretty nice repo and they have some prompts here. Uh, so you can actually see them here. If you go to data, you go to judge prompts, you actually, they actually have a really nice pairwise valuation prompt here. So you can certainly use LLM as judge or human to do pairwise valuation. And we can think of it as kind of a variant of A-B testing. We already talked about regression testing. So that's like you're comparing, you have a fixed eval set, you're comparing different changes to your app over time on this fixed eval set. We talked about back testing and pairwise valuation uh, is comparing um, you know, two generations on the same input, and you're encoding something like human preference or other types of criteria in a pairwise evaluator. So let's give an example of this. Let's say we want to do paper summarization for, for example, Twitter. So I loaded 10 different papers from archive, um, you know, very, you know, typically, uh, mostly they, they, they relate to uh, kind of LLMs, uh, a number of papers relate to kind of context extension, some new models. It's kind of a mix of LLM related papers. Um, I save them as a data set called uh, Paper Tree Generator. So if we go over, this data set lives in Langsmith. Here's the example. So it's basically just a bunch of papers, right? If you click on one of these, you can see uh, it's a whole bunch of input text. That's all that's going on. And these are going to be the inputs to our pairwise evaluation, right? So next, I'm just going to find a few different chains to do that paper summarization. And the main point here is I wanna try a few different LLMs. So let's use, let's try Anthropic for one. So here's my summarization prompt, um, you know, distill this, this text, i.e. the paper that we just talked about, one of these papers from the eval set, it gets plumbed in here, um, summarize it into a tweet, you know, per these five criteria, make an engaging title, bullet points, emojis, right, you get the idea. Uh, we're gonna use, Claude 3 Opus, we're going to use Haiku. Then I also use OpenAI, so I'm going to use uh, GPT-4 Turbo, which is you know, the latest model, 128K context, and I'm also going to use Command-R, which has, I believe, like 120,000 uh, token context window as well. So these are the four different LMs I'm going to use for my pairwise valuation testing. So I've defined all these. Um, and again, I'm using simple functions that are just going to invoke a really simple chain that's just going to be uh, basically my prompt here, um, pipe to my model, output uh, or parse the output to a string. And I'm going to be passing in my examples from my eval set, which all have this text key. You can see when we when we built the eval set, uh, we just defined our inputs as text, D, D being the, the, the full kind of input text from the paper. So that's all that's going on. Pretty simple stuff. Now here I define... This is where things get a little bit interesting. Before I think about pairwise evaluation, I just want to run an individual experiment evaluating the quality of my, my summaries in isolation. So I want to evaluate each one independently. And here's the evaluator I use. So I just defined like a custom uh, evaluation prompt. You're grading tw uh, summary tweets for papers. You know, ensure the answer meets this criteria. I kind of give the criteria back. I say give it a score of five to you know, zero to five, five meaning it meets all the criteria is, in real, is an engaging tweet, um, zero meaning it meets none of the criteria and is bad, right? So that's all I do there. And then I run those evals. So I'm going to run the evals on each of my four models. So GPT-4 Turbo, Opus, Command-R, Haiku, all of my eval set. And we can see over here, so I've run these, and this summary engagement score is what I've logged. So that's this thing, right? So when I run my custom eval, I'm saving the key as summary engagement score. It's an int. So I can look at the score here. Now, here's where things get kind of interesting. I want to draw your attention. So you can see the evaluation score for three of these is basically five out of five, right? No differentiation. 
Presto, Opus, PPT4, Haiku, all are scored 5 out of 5 in this independent evaluation. Now, you see Command R is actually graded a little bit lower, uh, so you can kind of, you can then dig into the particular runs here if you want, um, and so you can look at each of these runs. You can look at the uh, feedback if you'd like, so you can actually add, um, you can just kind of show the eval scores here if you want, and so you can kind of see the grades, and, you know, th that's kind of, a little bit beside the point because we're going to really be focusing on pairwise, but I do want to show that when you have a criteria evaluator in isolation looking at text, it can be hard to normalize it and to highlight interesting differences between different LLMs, right? Because basically three out of four all saturate it, like they look fine in isolation. So that's just an interesting point to highlight. And that's kind of sets the motivation for why pairwise can be really helpful. Now, um, we've kicked all these VLs, we ran all these. Now here's where I'm going to show you how to do pairwise valuation. So we actually don't need this. And first I want to show something that's pretty interesting. So I created a prompt uh, for pairwise valuation and I drew largely from the LMSYS prompt that I showed above. Uh, so that was shown up here. Um, right here. So they have this nice set of prompts that they have used for LLM as judge and pairwise evaluation. I took it, I modified it slightly for this particular, particular task. So I say, you're an impartial judge looking at the quality between two AI assistant outputs. Begin your evaluation by comparing the responses. And here, what I do is I find that this criteria for judging is very important. You have to be very pointed with kind of what you're trying to differentiate. And because this is Twitter, I want my tweets to be engaging. I want them to be like viral. So I basically say, which one is a more engaging title, more engaging list of bullets, more engaging use of emojis, right? So I'm trying to kind of differentiate between these generations, which in isolation, like we showed, all rank high, right? So, you know, based on the independent, independent evaluation, uh, Opus, Turbo, Haiku, all are kind of five out of five, right? But this pairwise evaluation, I really want to distinguish by comparative evaluation, which one really like pops, like how do I compare these to one another? Um, so that's really what I'm doing here. You can see I'm plumbing in assistant A answer, assistant B answer, um, and I'm asking it to score like I'll put one if it's A, two if it's B, zero if it's a tie, right? That's all that's going on. So I'll go back down. That's all I'm doing here. I'm sitting at my custom evaluator. Um, I, I pull in this grade prompt, and you can see really all I'm doing is I'm plumbing in the answer, answer A, answer B, uh, the instructions for the particular task, which were actually uh, defined up here in my chains. Um, and this is where I map from the grade output to an assignment per each run. So basically, if you recall, if the score is one, that means assistant A or answer A is preferred. So I mark basically uh, the A is the first, so one, zero. If it's two, it's assistant B, so zero, one, otherwise zero, zero. So that's all I do here. Then I basically just simply, I can simply input the name of my experiments. So if you, if you go back over here, I have four experiments. You can see they're all named right here. All I have to do is just plumb those names in uh, to my uh, comparative evaluation. I plumb in the evaluator defined here. I plumb in the name of my existing experiments, which have already been run, which you can see here. And I kick all these off, right? So I'm going to compare Command R to Opus. I'm going to compare Opus to Haiku. I'll compare GPT-4 to Opus. And I'll compare Opus to Command R. Flip the order. We just want to make sure that there's no positional effect. Like it's not always picking the first one, right? So I'm going to kick those off. So then what I'm going to do is once you kick those off, you're going to see in your uh, data set that there's now these pairwise experiments. And you can see now we have this new column called rank preference, which is pretty cool. So you actually can see, here's the experiments I've run. And they're all kind of, this is the creation time. So initially I ran Command R versus Opus. And what it found is it preferred Opus over Command R seven to three. And now recall, I also ran Opus Command R the reverse order just to make sure there's no positional effect. In that case, it went eight to two. So that's a good thing. So that shows you that it prefers Opus relative to Command R consistently. And of course, there is a little bit of noise in the ranking. It's eight versus seven. So it is an important thing to note that there's some non-determinism in the way that the grader works. But it's fine. You certainly see directionally 
uh, you know, which, which is preferred. Now we can also click on these and zoom in. Um, so this is pretty nice. You actually see a good view of like, of, you know, here's your Opus response. Here's command R. You can really see clearly which one is preferred and why, right? So that's actually pretty nice. Um, now you can even zoom in further and you can click here on the evaluator. Um, so that spins this up. So this is actually looking at the evaluator trace. You can actually convince yourself like why. And in my evaluator prompt, I output both the grade, the preference, and the explanation. So this tells you exactly why it graded one over the other. So that's another like really convenient thing I like to do. Um, so anyway, this is pretty cool. You can like really zoom in. You can see kind of why one is ranked over the other. Now, I also want to show you something interesting here. When we compare Opus to Haiku, it's kind of a tie, 50-50, right? And, you know, that's that's fine. Um, but what's really, and, and that's, well, I would say that's interesting, actually, because Haiku is a faster and cheaper model. So for this particular, particular task, I might then say, you know what, there's really no differentiation. I'll just go ahead and use Haiku. So that's that's actually a good thing. Now, what's also interesting is I see that GPT-4 actually does quite a bit better than Opus. So in that case, it's, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 instances prefers uh, GBD4 over Opus, and that's actually pretty interesting because both have a score of like five independently. So what this is telling you is, if you just look at one of these in, in, and try to score it individually, the grader kind of gives it a five out of five. But if you compare them to one another, it consistently prefers GPD4. And we can actually, again, zoom in and look at kind of why that is. We can look at the evaluation traces. And what's kind of nice here is we this, this lets you see... Um, this is like the GPT-4 output as as uh, assistant A, and then assistant B is uh, is Opus, and you can kind of see, and you can really this will give you a very detailed explanation as to why I preferred A versus B. Um, you know, it's more engaging in several aspects. It gives you a very detailed breakdown. So, anyway, the key intuition is simply this: pairwise evaluations can be a really nice way. For example, if you're doing like kind of ambiguous tasks like text generation to compare between different generation options, different LLM options to perform the generation. In this particular case, what we saw is that if I just simply try to define like a criteria grader to look at them in isolation, so you can kind of see here, it's hard to discriminate, right? Three out of my five models all get a five out of five. But if I use the uh, pairwise grader, I can see that there's significant preferences between the two when I'm looking at, for example, turbo head to head versus Opus, it seems to really blow it away for this particular task. Now, of course, you should tune uh, and really think about your evaluation prompt, and that's probably the hardest part. So you can see for this particular task, I showed it previously, um, this is what my prompt is, and I did have to do some prompt engineering to, um, to really highlight, for example, engaging is what I want to differentiate on. Now, if I picked a different differentiation criteria, maybe the scores would be different. So this, this prompt matters a lot and you should absolutely play with it. You can fork this prompt. Um, it's, it's just, it lives in our prompt hub and it's public. But I do want to mention that, you know, if you can encode human preference in your greater prompt in a crisp way, like we're showing, we really want to enforce in, engagement. Um, it can be a really powerful way to do evaluation between different LLM options as we see in a, in a task like this. Thanks.